all right so in this video we are going to continue with a bank reconciliation statement maybe for those who didn't watch part one two three and four that we did on the previous one uh, i can give you the background what is all about a bank reconciliation remember when we talk about a reconciliation we have what we call a bank reconciliation we also have what we call creditors reconciliation and the other one is debtors all right so from the one that we are going to do today uh, we are going to do the first one which is bank reconciliation bank reconciliation we are comparing what we have recorded in our books as a business and what the bank has recorded on their statement so if we find that there is some differences we have to solve that problem because at the end of the day the balances must be the same uh, for example if you withdraw a hundred rand uh, from atm uh, what you must have on hand it must be hundred rand because you withdraw hundred rand and in the bank statement it must reflect that you have withdraw hundred rand but if we found that uh, you withdraw 100 rand but when you check on your statement you find that it has withdrawn a thousand which means that there is something that went wrong which need to be rectified so it's what we call a difference so amount on our books and amount on the statement must be the same all right so when we talk about creditors reconciliation obviously we are comparing our books and the books of creditors and the last one debtors we are comparing our books and the books of of the debtors so all these three statements they must balance at the end all right now let's focus from uh, what we are going to do today so let me give you a background the first statement that we have is what we call a ledger account when we say a ledger account that's our books so under reconciliation, a ledger account is the one that you know very well that we record cash receipts, journal on the debit, and cash payment, journal on the credit. It's what we call a ledger account, cash receipts and cash payment, journal. So this one is our own book. All right. After that, we're going to record what we call a bank reconciliation statement. Okay. So what I want to emphasize here, guys, is that when, when it comes to these two statements, when you record, you have to make sure that you swipe aside. In other words, if you record cash receipts this side, you have to make sure that when you go to reconciliation, you record them on the other side. It's a plus. So all cash payment journal that you record on the credit side when it comes to ledger account, you have to make sure that you swipe them to this side. It's a minus so that's what we have to to do which means that the one that we are going to prepare which is bank reconciliation uh, in this question we were not required to prepare a ledger account but straight to reconciliation you must know that this side is for minus minus simple means that is cash payment okay plus is this side uh, which means that is receipt outstanding deposit a student check we must see them this side minus simply means that unfavorable plus is favorable unfavorable which means that it's not good it's negative favorable is a favor which means that is positive okay that's what you need to know first all right so now let's go to the question and try to uh, solve this problem that we have on this question paper okay uh, 1.1.1 .1 they give us a concept indicate whether the following statement are true or false and write only true or false in the next question number 1.1.1 .1 an external auditor will want to inspect the bank reconciliation statement at the end of each month okay it's one mark and the uh, 1.1.2 a debit balance on the bank statement reflect unfavorable let's first uh, attempt number one an external auditor will want to inspect the bank reconciliation at the end of each month is false when it comes to external auditors guys they come annually once they come once in a year 
they don't come every month so internal auditor is the one that has to uh, to check this reconciliation every month not external 1.1.2 a debit balance on the bank statement a debit balance on the bank statement reflect unfavorable is true because i already uh, teach you that this side is negative which means that it's unfavorable so that's two marks for the concept 1.1 bank reconciliation the main question the accountant of rizal and son received the bank statement on 31 july 2020 uh, compare it with cash journals for july 2020 Okay, we have a bank statement and a cash journal and required use the necessary information to prepare bank reconciliation statement. This is what we are going to prepare. Okay, they said on 31 July 2020 and determine the correct balance as per bank account. Bank account, we are going to calculate as a balancing figure. We don't even know whether it's favorable or unfavorable. We must check which side is higher. Okay, number A. On 31 July 2020, the bank statement show the favorable balance of 3,600. A favorable, a favorable is this side. Okay, uh, let's start by a balance. A bank balance as per bank statement. Because they said it's favorable and we know that our favorable is a plus side, is the side which is going to be 3600 okay just like that one mark for that number b item on the bank st the statement for july 2020 that does not appear in the case journal so in this one they even highlighted they said this amount they're on the bank statement but they are not there on the case journal which means that most of them they are not going to affect here because they were already recorded but we need to check because you can find that there are some uh, transactions that need to be cancelled. So we can't skip. We have to, to read. Okay. And paid check originally received from data. Uh, L read for 820 in settlement of his debt of 850 was dishonored due to insufficient fund. In other words, uh, our data was trying to pay us, but this person didn't have a cash in his bank. So he write probably the fake check which was uh, rejected later so in other words this one must be corrected under cash uh, receipt journal so we have to reverse this amount under cash journals okay because it was re initially recorded on the debit side which is cash uh, receipt, gen receipt journal which means that when we cancel we do opposite we have to subtract on the other side of cash payment journal which is not required in this one Okay, a tenant and bank deposited uh, the rent for June 2020, 2500, directly into the bank account. Obviously, we were going to record this under cash receipts because we receive money. Okay, a debit order of owner of cell phone is 1400. This one we we're going to record a drawings under cash payment journal of 1400. It's not going to affect this. And the credit card levy and service fee. Service fee is cash payment of 360. Okay. And then the last one. Uh, they said a deposit of 3,800 was discovered that the account of results on was credited in error. So deposit uh, in the bank, in the cash journal, uh, we needed to debit them because they are cash receipts. But this one was credited by mistake. So which means that if we... We credit on our cash journal, which means that when it we it come to this side, we did mistake in debit because obviously we swap a side. So this one, of course, is going to affect this. But you need to proceed and read this transaction. They said the bank will correct this in August 2020. Remember, we are doing uh, month of July, uh, which means that August is next month. So you know the principle that. If, for example, 100 rand was mistakenly debited, when we credit, we record it twice. 100 rand and another 100 rand. The one for rectifying and the one to correct. But in this case, guys, uh, because they said that 
it will be corrected in August, which means that we are only going to do it to cancel, and the other one we're gonna record it on August. In other words, <coughs> we are going to record it twice, just that the other one we will do it this month, and the other one we will do it next month. Okay. Um, which means that on the statement we're going to say it correction of deposit okay then amount is 3800 okay just like that number c the item on the cash receipts and cash payment journal that does not appear in the bank statement Okay, and they said the deposit fifteen thousand two hundred. They said this item they are in the cash book, but they are not there on the reconciliation, which means that they are outstanding. You know that under reconciliation we have outstanding deposit and outstanding check. Let's check. The first one they said a deposit uh, of fifteen thousand two hundred, which means that this one it it is outstanding what deposit. Okay, we're gonna have outstanding. deposit and the amount 15,200 why on the credit side because this was recorded on the debit side on the cash book because it's a receipt so when it comes to this side it must be credited where there is a favorable because a receipt is a favorable okay and the outstanding check, we have two of them, the one for July and the one for August. So, guys, I want to emphasize the issue of date. So, when it comes to outstanding check, if we have check which is advanced, we have to record it each and every month until it reach that day. Okay, even if we are given for December, we are going to record it as long as it's not older than six months. Okay, because if it's older than six months, we have to cancel. Okay, outstanding check. Okay, we have number, the first one is 231 check and 235. Okay, it's 2020 because it's cash payment, it's this side, 2020 and 1570. Okay, number D, unmarked item on the bank reconciliation statement for june 2020 is check number 156 this is dated 5 january so if you count from 5 january until july you will find that this check is already outdated because it's more than six months so if it's more than six months we are not going to record it anymore this one must be cancelled under cash receipt journal in other words it must be re reversed uh, so that they can do a, a new check guys this one is more like a, you purchase a time and you spend so many years without putting it which means that if that date reach uh, that a time is no longer going to do it to work you are not going to be able to to redeem it okay so which means that uh, even this check is not going to work anymore we must not put it okay now I think we don't have any other transaction, which means that we have to check which side is higher so that we can calculate what we call a balance as per bank account. Remember they said balance as per bank account must be calculated as a balancing figure. Account. This one, they said that it must be calculated as a balancing figure. So, if uh, cash receipts and cash payment journals were required, obviously, we were going to get it there. But in this case, we have to calculate it as, as a balancing figure. So, we have to check which side is higher. So, when I do my calculation, uh, I found that this side is 18,800, and which means that it must be the same with this side. Then in order for you to get this balancing figure, you have to take total and you subtract all of this amount. Okay, it's going to be 18,800. Okay, so it's not this. 18,800 minus 1,570 in 2020 and 3.8. It will give you 11,400.
110 all right so this is how you should uh, deal with a bank reconciliation statement so for those who want to join extra class guys for this year we are closed so we are going to start again on the 4th of january so you have to make sure that you come in time so that you can start with other students